most of us are still in that state and phase of only knowing our existence through our senses. If our senses didn't exist, we wouldn't know ourselves beyond that. Our natural state is bliss. If we're not free experiencing it, we're doing something to push it away. So then we've got to look. Is this something I'm opposing? Is there something I've got enmity towards? You go to a space where there's no noise. I don't mean external noise. There's no internal noise anymore. There's no noise of the thoughts. There's no thoughts of past. There's no thoughts of future. All that there is, is just this deep inner stillness. And this is the potential of every human being is to experience that bliss. Welcome to our Jump Decide podcast. In this podcast, we'll be going through the Mool Mantra. Through the Mool Mantra, we'll be answering that question, where do we all come from? What is our truth? What is our origin? Just looking at this word, Mool Mantar. The Mool Mantar was blessed to us and given to us by Guru Nanak Dev Ji. The Mool Mantar is Guru Nanak Dev Ji's experience of that one. Guru Nanak Dev Ji is handing that wisdom over to us. Why is this wisdom being given to us? Is it so that we can take the Guru's wisdom and we start to be stagnant in believing what the Guru is giving to us? No. Guru Arjan Dev Ji says, Sun yaar hamare sajjan Ek karon binantiya Tis mohun lal pyaare Hon firon kho jantiya Guru Arjan Dev Ji Saying in these beautiful words, is saying that Sun Yar Hamare Sajjan. Oh, listen, oh, my friend, my Sajjan, my companion, referring to which companion? Somebody that is enlightened, somebody that is one with the Creator. Guru Arjan Dev Ji saying, Sun Yar Hamare Sajjan, Ek Karon Benantiya, that I have this one request to put before you, and that request is this Mohan Lal Pyare. I'm looking, I'm in search. Or that Mohan, that enticing Pyara, that beloved, that one that we have all come from. That I am Fero, meaning I'm going around, I'm looking for and doing this Khoj. Khojantiya is saying that I am that one that is searching. This is why Guru Nanak Dev Ji is sharing this wisdom with us. To get us to that state, to that state of searching, to that state of becoming a seeker, to that state of where we start to deeply long to know our origin. And that's why this mantra is called Mool Mantra. It tells us about our Mool. Mool can be translated to, literally to roots. When we look at a tree, we're often fooled in thinking that that's all that there is. We look at that tree standing there and not knowing how that tree works. Before we're told that, we just think it's standing there. But when we come to learn, when we start to search, koj, kojanti, or we become that, one that is seeking, we start to dig. And as we start to dig deeper and deeper, we start, we come to realize actually this tree isn't just standing there on its own. It's only able to exist and stand there because of its roots. So mool literally translates to root. This is our root mantra, meaning this mantra is what takes us to our very root. To our origin, we dig that soil and we come to know that how deep 
these roots are. And because of these roots, this tree stands. Because of these roots, this tree is what it is. And in that same way, Guru Nanak Dev Ji tells us about our origin. Guru Nanak tells us about our roots. Just like Bhagat Kabir Ji say that Iho Ram ki answer. That you're actually the ants of that Kaho Kabir Iho Ram ki ants. It's telling us clearly here that we are actually the ants, meaning that we come from. Where do we originate from? What is our essence? And our essence, where we come from, is from that Ram. Ram meaning that one that is embedded in everything. Mool Mantra. So, that's what it means to become a seeker. The Guru tells us of that one. And it gives us that thirst to want to go to that place. To that place where Guru Nanak Dev Ji is going to tell us that place is Nirvar. Which we're going to come to, we're going to explore further. Nirvar meaning without any form of hatred. There's, where the, there's a place where there's no enmity. Just like Bhagdara Vidas Ji tell us that. Begam Pura Shaherka No. Saying that place which is called Begam Pura. Pura means place. Begam. Gum means sorrow. We often experience sorrow in our life when? When we lose something. When something dear to us isn't there anymore. When someone dear to us passes on or dies. But that place is a place where there's no gum, there's no sorrow. Be gum pura. Shahar ka no. Bhagdar is saying that shahar, that See, that town is called a place that is bare gum, that is beyond sorrow. There is only one place that is truly beyond sorrow. And the Guru tells us that that place, that existence of that one, is only in that place where na oho mare na ova sog. If we can actually Go and find that place where there is no death. And then when there's no death, when there's no end, then there's no sorrow, there's no sorrow. And this is the Mool Mantra. When somebody starts to describe such a beautiful place to us, it gives us the thirst to want to go to that place. Because by now, we've all tried. We've tried entering many other places but it hasn't given us what we are looking for we obtain things and still feel unsatisfied we reached so many places we had so many goals set out for ourselves and upon reaching those goals expecting to feel complete and fulfilled but it was an illusion it still, still felt that there was more to obtain. Still there was that empty feeling. And that's why when Guru Nanak Dev Ji starts to tell us about such a beautiful place, which is our actual origin and our root, it gives us then the thirst. Let's go through this Mool Mantar so that it can spark us from inside, it can give us that thirst. Guru Nanak Dev Ji says to us, This is your truth. Your truth is Ek. Oang Kar. Guru Nanak Dev Ji start off with Ek. And when we look at this, this Ek, it's used the number one, so in numeric form. Because if Guru Nanak Dev Ji had used letters, then somebody could have argued the point. Oh, well, you know, if it was spelled out with an iri and then 
Edi no sehari, then kakka. Somebody could argue the point, well, actually, the Edi stands for this and the kakka stands for this. This letter stands for this, this letter stands for that. Gurnanik Devji used the number one, saying that the truth is there is only but one. There is nothing other than that one. And the illusion that we fall into is thinking that there's more and there's something else other than that one. Thinking that maybe there's God and then there's this. But Guru Nanak Dev Ji is saying, actually, this is the essence of all of Gurbani, is to get us to that place of just the realization of Ek. Guru Nanak Dev Ji is saying, this is your root. You come from that one. So here, Ek will translate to that one, who some refer to as God. And People have many names for that one. Here we're referring to that one as the formless. So ek here is the formless, the one without a form. And that's very difficult to comprehend because we know life as form. We experience this life through our senses. Everything we know, we know what we can touch or feel whatever we can sense but this is telling us that one is formless where there's none of this matter there is no thought there is no form there is nothing but that one when we think of formless we often then use words like nothing where there was nothing and the Guru not using the word nothing, but the Guru uses the word one, where there is only but the formless. So from that, then when this creation came into being, from that there was a sound. From that just being the formless came, then the sound oh, um, because this is split up into three parts. And then we've got the Oong. Oong, which is the sound that the creation is made from. This here, Guru Arjan Dev Ji Patsha, help us to understand this and expand on this. Guru Arjan Dev Ji says to us that Oong Gurmukh Gyo Akara. And this is from a Bani called Bhavan Akri. And this is the body of this. And it's saying that Oon Gurmak Kiyo Akara. So this is open to interpretation. We're going to take one interpretation saying here that through the Gurmuks, and the Gurmuks here we're referring to is that those that became completely centered and they came to realize and they went so deep inside, they realized that this Akara, Akara means the form, all of this creation, the entire form, anything that has come, has come, has been created from this sound, Oang. Oang Gurmak Kyo Akara. What we're going to do here is that we've got Ek now and we've got Oang. So Oang, like we said, is the sound that has created everything. And then we've got the Gar. But if we look at the way this is written, so we've got the one, and then we've got the oang, and then the kar is an open line at the top. The open line at the top is saying that that limitless one isn't outside of this creation, isn't outside of this oang of the sound, is actually embedded within the entire creation. And that's what God is telling us. But it's telling us as this creation is in constant motion, is going through those cycles constantly of something being created, something then, then the creation being created and then sustained. And then it's also then comes to an end. It's destroyed. 
whatever that is, even if we look at the cells within our body, we look at this body and we think that, oh, look, that body is the same from birth till the end in the sense of, yes, we know that, you know, it grows and everything, but that even the cells within our body, they come to an end and then they're renewed. So there's this constant motion of this creation is made up in those three modes of creation, something's created, then it's sustained, and then it's destroyed. But the God is saying to us, within all of this, that one is sat here, is sat within, but is still and is immovable. That's why Guru Gobind Singh, Singh Sahib Ji tell us that 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 one is achalamurat. Achal means something that doesn't move, something that is still. And that's what still that stillness is within the creation, is where the creation has come from. That stillness is within us. That stillness is our root. That stillness is what is referred to as Sahaj. That the Guru is telling us that Sahaj Unu Sab Lochadi. And that everyone is longing for that stillness. Because it is that stillness, it is that stillness that is said to be bliss, that is Anand. Sahaj Anand Basa Bairagi. Somebody that becomes a Bairagi, somebody that becomes a seeker, somebody that becomes that one that yearns, they are the ones that reach that Sahaj. It's a Bairagi that reaches that Sahaj, that stillness. That stillness is that one inside that is beyond this entire creation, this Maya, this illusion. This illusion that will not stay, that will not remain, that is temporary, that the Guru is telling us, Jodise, so chalan har, lapta reho, tehe and, andar, explaining to us that whatever you see is going to leave, it's not going to remain. Oh, bin se, oh man, pachatave, the Guru is saying about, we used an example of the tree before. The Guru says that Birk ki chaya syor So this oang, the entire creation, is like the shadow of that one, of that formless. And just like the shadow of a tree. And we often start to believe that the shadow is the truth. The shadow is everything. But getting connected and starting to think that this, this creation is permanent. This is, let's even word it like this. This creation, everything, there is nothing other than this, what we see. This passes. But in that same way, if you start to think, if you've not seen the tree, but you look at the shadow and you think, this is it, this is everything. There's nothing, it's not come from somewhere, but it's come from the actual tree. Without the tree, the shadow couldn't exist. And in that same way, our body couldn't exist without that formless, without that one. And it's that one that we are all seeking to be with and experience. So, God is that stillness within. That stillness within is referred to as Sahaj. That Sahaj, the experience of Sahaj is bliss, is Anand. And this is the potential of every human being is to experience that bliss. Bliss is often mistakenly explained to be feeling high. When somebody refers to Chardikala, they think of being on a high, being this constant notion of being positive. And, but bliss hasn't got a comparison. Bliss hasn't got a parallel. 
because it comes from it comes from the formless and it comes from being still there's nothing that it can be compared to so when you sit and you have an emo a moment you might you might have this moment whilst you're standing you might have this moment whilst you're walking whilst you're sitting in kirtan whilst you're just sitting in silence you go to a space where there's no noise i don't mean external noise there's no internal noise anymore there's no noise of the thoughts there's no thoughts of past there's no thoughts of future and all that there is is just this deep inner stillness because when we use the word silence even though the guru has used that word and the guru uses the word saying sun samad lagayenda when referring to that one and saying that that one is just sitting in this sun samad lagayenda when we look at the pangti arbad narbad tundu kara we might as well um, introduce preacher <laughs> singh that's with us as well <laughs> who's uh, going to be finding the pangti for us so so um now that, that was quite intense but just to say that we prepared and we we are told him all the pangti that I'm going to be using and I've only probably used about 5% of those yet and all the rest have been different and uh so and this is what comes from when we do vichar and we contemplate god in the morning and then uh, uh and then all this happens mm-hmm. so when we look at this pangti it's in this pangti where look sunna samad lagainda i didn't make it up it's there okay yeah? guru says na din rehna na chand na suraj when you connect to something deep inside of you for you there's no sense of then there's no sense of day because remember that the existence of the formless is still there and when we connect to the formless there is no day there there is no rain there there's no night there there's no chand there's no moon there's no there's no suraj there because for you there is no day there is no night there is no color there's no dark there's no light none of that exists when you connect to that formless and then all that there is is this sun samad lagainda and it's like when somebody goes in sat there in samadhi and they and here guru is describing which guru's bani is this we ji gurunan dev ji all right so yeah, gurunan dev ji is describing this as a, imagine like somebody sat in samadhi let's just uh quickly describe what samadhi is samadhi we ji uh, you, you got any you got a description for samadhi deep meditation yeah deep med- they say so samadhi is best described in the way that you're in this thoughtless awareness but you've not become unaware you're actually in this absolute consciousness but there's no thoughts there but we often think that we are conscious when we are thinking but smadhi is actually you're conscious and there's no thoughts it's just still and that is that that car is sat there within the oong within the creation so to know more in detail we've got the individual videos that you can watch on the mool mantra to understand the three qualities of maya to understand the three qualities which is rajo tamo sato and how what, how this existence what it's made up of and those videos can be watched you got the dragon video as well aren't you? yeah we've got a separate dragon video as well but if now just us talking about that now because there's so many of us living in noise the noise within our mind 
then noise, external noises as well. So you know when we start describing a place like that, we talk about Begum Pura, where there's no sorrow, and from losing something, and this stillness is the bliss. It's not being on a high, because where you're on a high, you can compare that to being the opposite to that is a low. But there is no opposite to bliss. So we often misinterpret bliss. Because it's hard, isn't it? Unless you haven't experienced it, you automatically think when you feel pretty positive and high, you think, oh, that's bliss. That's not the interpretation of bliss that the Guru is talking about because the interpretation to bliss is the experience that comes from Sahaj, from that stillness. Again, that stillness isn't merely having a clear mind. It's not just having a balanced approach to life. It's this deep inner stillness. When... Because we live in so much noise in today's world, does that sound quite tempting to want to experience that world? <laughs> so that world is, and, and this is what we're saying, the Guru gives us the wisdom, not so that we just stop and say, oh, this is what Sikhs believe in. No, this is to say, so we can get to that point of where we started with saying that, we become like that. This is Mohun Allah And we say, that's me now. This Das Piyare, Sirtari Utare, Ekapuri Darshan. DJ, like now you're saying, well, you know what? This is what it then means to become a disciple. Now, now you're saying, so look, if we're not there, it doesn't mean we're not a Sikh. Because there's many different levels. Like we want to. We, there's that level where, like, because I always say it's really important to understand because there might be somebody that, that is lost in some form of addiction, could be alcohol or something like that, and they want to, they want to come out of that. And so at that level, that, that seeking isn't there, but it doesn't mean then they take on some of the Guru's wisdom, they're still a seek. But then when you become someone that is seeking, it's that, that st step forward. And, you know, and, and this is then you're saying, just tell me about that beloved. I'll take off my head. Whatever it takes. Because because what you're describing is like, wow. Yeah? And then you're thinking, yes, like that, I want that bliss. And they say that to even, how can you want something that you haven't experienced or you haven't seen? But when somebody describes something to you that is enough, and then when you have even a moment of glimpse of it, it gives you, then that's evidence. And even today's, you know, modern studies tell us that it doesn't have to be the complete evidence of something, but if you have even a little bit of evidence of something, it, it embeds then your faith and belief to walk towards that even more. And as you get a bit more, then your faith and belief gets even deeper. Yeah, so it's like, it's nal nal, right? Does that make sense? Like, this is half Punjabi, half English. It's nal nal. <laughs> <laughs> And that makes a lot of sense because it's not blind faith then. The initial part is that faith in somebody's been somewhere. So you're not denying their experience of going somewhere. And it's like, <coughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm mammy on the, <laughs> I want to come too. So that's Ek Oankar. Satanam. And this is meant to be a summary, by the way, so that's why we're not going to go and dwell deeper into the Oang aspect of the creation. Now, Satanam, these two words can be put together. 
even though often you'll see them separated, you'll see them separated here. But we know Gurbani originally was all written where it was Larivar, so it was all connected. So this can be now translated together, Satnam. Nam here, if you look at the way it's spelled, the mamma's got an onkar underneath it. This tells us clearly that this is a noun, it's masculine and it's singular. So it's only it's referring to the name of the one. If the onkar wasn't there, it could be referring to the name of many different people. Yeah. Or it could be names, but this is just name. But here, name here means like what's the best way? So if we used to translate Naam here, we'd translate it like this. We'd say that Naam here means, what's the best way to describe what that one is? Yeah, like, does that make sense? So if like, you've got a name now, which is Preacharan, but it doesn't necessarily mean your name is describing what you are. It can be, but it might not be. But this here, Nam, is saying that the horn, that what is that one? I was going to say identity, but that wouldn't be the correct word to use as well. But it's more like, what is that one? That one is Sat. So Nam is saying, like, let's describe that one. And hopefully, like, the names that we've been given and these, this body and mind been given... You know, that, that should be describing potentially who we are. We, we're trying to work towards that instead of being man anda no sujan, you know. And uh, where <laughs> Guru Nanak Dev Ji is saying that man anda no sujan, like your name is wise, but you're actually ignorant, you know. So like, <laughs> uh, it, it, it never is going to be the case for why Guru, for that one when Gurnanth is describing and gives a name to that one and the name to that one that Vaiguru uses to describe in entirety is Sat he's saying that you are the truth the Tattas Ka Asihari comes from the Sanskrit word Satya the truth and when we say the truth we're saying that there was never a time when you didn't exist you have, it's not that you began at some point, and this is obviously going to be expanded on in this mantra. So sat is something that always has been, and sat means something that is never going to stop to exist. So sat is then described in the part afterwards, but we'll come to that. Everything else is, everything f after ek, everything that came after ek, which is oon, the oong is asat. Because asat means something that is temporary, something that is changing. It comes and it goes. So everything about what we, most of us, think of what we are at the moment is actually asat. It is not the truth. Most of us are still in that state and phase of only knowing our existence through our senses. If our senses didn't exist, we wouldn't know ourselves beyond that. Yeah. So, unless we reach that state of Sat, of Ek, so this body is going to come to an end one day, so it's not Sat, it's not the truth. Yeah. Our thoughts come to an end one day. Our memory will come to an end one day. So it's not the truth. But we've started thinking that is all that we are. So we're connected to asat, something that is not the truth. So that one is the truth. That's the best way to describe that one. That's what Nami is saying to us. And that one is Kartapurk. Karta literally can be translated to creator, but I often think, and I and this is could be quite personal, but when we use the word creator, sometimes it makes us think that we're talking about a past tense, somebody that has created and has then done its job. So 
But karta here is somebody that is doing. Doesn't stop. Is the one that is behind everything. So purk can be simply translated to being. Or purk, the second translation to purk comes from puran pur reheo srabhatai. That purk can also come from this, meaning that you are pur, the word here, pur means embedded in completely incomplete, in everything, yeah? everywhere, everything, you are there. You are within this body, you are within these elements. Just like Guru Gobind Singh Ji told us that Jale ha, thale ha, apit ha, ape ha. If we look at the way this is written, it's written with a dulama and a bindi. Jale ha. Any idea why? Peter, like why with why a bindi there? Is it to bring it into the present tense that it's now? Hmm. It's more so that Guru Gobind Singh Ji is saying that I'm not telling you guys that God exists in the water. This is Guru Gobind Singh Ji in that moment talking in experience of experiencing that one in the water as well as everywhere else. So it's not an upadesh, it's not an instruction or it's not a teaching. It's, an, it's just an expressive uh, ex Guru Gobind Singh Ji is expressing his experience of that one and saying, Jale, ha, you are in the water. Yeah. So that's what that means. Puran pur reheo sarabhatai. That you are embedded. So pur here, you are embedded in everything. You are embedded in the water. Jale, ha, you are embedded in thale, ha. In the earth, so in the soil, and this body itself is made up of the water. We've, they say that we're about 70% water. But, so that water isn't just only the water external, but even that the water within us has that one within it. So even the, the soil, the earth that this body is made up of, that one is within that as well, embedded within that, that the earth element of our body, the water element within our body, that one is within that too. So it's not even that we have to go far and look at and, and look at flowing water to say you are in there. We can just see that even the water within me, that you are within there too. And that's what karta purk means, is saying that. You, the one that is behind everything, this creation, and the one that is doing and has made this creation the way it is, the one that has designed water to be what it is, for it to be wet and for what, when it hits that temperature, then it forms into steam. For who's created it to, for it to be that way? It's you, it's that one, it's the purk, right? It's that being that's embedded in everything. You're the karta. It's not the ego, that illusion of ego, of me thinking, well, you know, I think um, it was me that was behind making the water what it is. We can never say that. We will always have to say, tu karta, that it's actually... You that has made it the way it is. It's you that has designed for the water, for the fire, for the soil, for the air to be what it is. The nature of it. I cannot alter that. So it's tunkarta. You are the doer. You the one that is doing everything, that has made everything for what it is, the way it is. And I cannot now alter that. means I now have to play... To your game. Is it Jo Likya Kartar? Yeah, there we go. It is. 
like whatever has been scribed, whatever has been written by that one. So when we say written, we're saying whatever that one has written for the way that element to be, we cannot alter that. You can't midday erase it. That means if I now touch something, if I touch water, I cannot erase what, how that water is going to react to me. So I can't now say, the ego cannot say, the I cannot say, when I touch this water that has been created by you, I will choose the way this water reacts to me. That, that just can't be done. Whatever's been written is written. So like imagine if you're going to make something now. You've got an idea and you're going to create something. And you get your laptop out. I was going to say you get your little writing pad out, but you wouldn't ever do that, would you? You'd no. always be a laptop or your phone. Mm. Uh, I still do. I'm still a bit old school sometimes. So if you're going to now create a system, or because you're the... You love creating systems. Yeah? So if you're going to create a system, you'll write some notes out somewhere of what that's going to look like, how it's going to be. If you're going to write some. And in that same way, God has, not in that sense, written it on, on a Mac somewhere. Yeah, but you never know unless Steve Jobs got in touch with God and say, look, yo, you want to buy a laptop? <laughs> it's pretty fast, this one. <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> He's pretty connected apparently. <laughs> so, on the laptop that God bought from Steve Jobs, no. <laughs> you think he's pretty fast typer? Who, God? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so God's written everything, the, the, the nature to everything. And we cannot escape the nature to whatever's been written. Of how things work, how the effect of something is, the ripple effect of things. And that's what karta means. Karta helps us to take away our ego. Then how can you say ma? Because you can only play to God's game. Whatever somebody achieves, you can only achieve it playing to God's game. You cannot go outside of it to achieve whatever you want to achieve. If you want to, like, say, look, take the example, if you want to build your muscles, if you want to build your bicep, you can't just say that I'll do it however I want to. Yeah. And so I can't say, you know, beaching up a bag of chocolate, shaka there, bicep, barjan, hinda. Like, you know, should we try it? <laughs> You know, if we sat here and said, you know, we'll junk out on some biscuits and that should build my bicep. Yeah, somebody could argue the point. Yeah, but you know, when you pick it up, like, you know, I'm like, like, let's not get silly about this, but you get the gist, right? So we have to play to the karta's game. Whatever, however it's been written for the design, we have to play to that. So we would then have to lift weights, uh, build the bicep in whatever it takes to build the bicep, whatever it means to play to that game, the repetition that needs to be done, the exercise that needs to be done for it to start building. It could never have been my way or your way. It always has to be the karta's way. That's what it means, and when we don't understand these things, we make a right mess of life. I've known for people to take this one line and lose their faith within God because they've not understood it. Because they think it means that, you know, in, on one side you're telling me I can sow a seed, on the other side you're saying I can't erase anything so everything's preordained for me. I make a right mess. But actually, it just means I have to play to your game. 
You're free to choose. Yes. But you're not free from the consequences of your choices. Yeah. So like I said, if we eat chocolate, then only that, what the creator has designed to happen from eating that will happen, not what we want to happen different to that. So, you know, and so that's so humbling. And then we can actually sit there and say, hmm, tu karta. When we're saying, when we're actually saying that, that's why when people say, but I do my part, I read Gurbani, I still don't feel better or I'll still, I'm still filled with the ego. It's because we're just reading it and not saying it. But imagine if you, you, you were saying it from inside because you came to realize that it's your game and have to play to your game, then you'd be like, wow, tu karta. And in the moment, you say tu karta, ego can't exist. There's, there's just ego cannot be there. You can only have one thing. You can have tu, you can have ma. So if you're saying tu, you're doing, yeah, it's your game. I have to play to that. Then I can't be in my ego. Tu karta, karana, ma nahi. I'm, no, not, I'm not the one that's doing it. Because it's you've designed it to be like that. So you're the one that is doing it in that way. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yeah? So if I said, I built my muscle, actually I'm saying I play to your game. I had to do what, it, what you've designed for me to have to do to build this muscle. So you're the one that is the doer. Tu karta karana ma nahi. Ego couldn't do anything. It's just in, the ego is just an illusion to think it was all me. It was all me. Man, na hi, ja hao kari na hui. So if I said no, no, I'll do it, and that's going back to our example. That's like saying I can do this. You know what? Here you go. I'm gonna bang out a certain chocolate. Uh, Preach in. Any favorite chocolates? Oh, Ferrero Rocher, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A uh, nice old Ferrero Kidaka. I don't even know the <laughs> should the jar and over it. You'll get something for that, bro. You know, um, can't have a favorite chocolate and not do something of it. <laughs> What's it for you? <laughs> what chocolate is it for me? I, I, I'm more of a just a like. As long as it's a good quality dark chocolate, you know. And Jahon Karina Hui. Jahon Kari. Just because I say, well, I want to do that and and I want that result, that it doesn't work like that. And this is what it means to connect to God. What we're actually doing now, we're actually meditating on these words. Because it's helping us to surrender to Kartapurk. And then, how does that kartapurk operate? Does that kartapurk operate from fear? And Guru Nanak Dev Ji says, no. That kartapurk operates from a place of beyond fear, no fear, without fear, nirpo. Because the word nir means without. And saying whatever that karta is doing, is doing without fear. You might be somebody that holds a status within this, within this world. And you might be somebody that's very well respected. But that doesn't matter. Because that one, the one that has created this game, the karta, the, the doer behind this, the writer behind this, isn't going to take that into consideration. That, well, you're this such and such person, you've got this status in this world, people fear you. But God isn't going to fear you. God is going to be equal. God is going to be the same. Because that's what it means to be God. To be God, it means that I'm going to treat you the same. So if you can be whoever you are in this world, but if you eat a certain food, for example, and God thinks, well, this food isn't actually, this food naturally is going to react like this because that's the, the design behind it. 
right? And it's going to react like this in your body. It can potentially build up, you know, you, I don't know, let's say cholesterol or something, right? You can end up with high cholesterol with this. God's not now going to have that fear and thinking, well, this is breathe jaran. Yeah, like people really like respect him for his for the work that he does. Like God is carefree in that sense, not careless, not doesn't care about anyone. So that would be a misinterpretation, but is carefree and is fearless. Being fearless means I'm going to treat you the same. That these laws of creation are the same for everyone. And that's going and becoming fearless. And how do we do that? How do we get to that stage where we start becoming more like that? And there's a beautiful line here. I think it's by Kabirji, Bhagat Kabirji saying that, Dada dar upaje dar jai. And this is actually amazing because here Kabirji's taken the letter Dada. It is Kabirji, right? Yeah, so Kabirji here, because there's two Bhavan Akris in Guru Granth Sahib Ji, one by Guru Arjan Dev Ji and one by Bhagat Kabirji. So Kabirji used the letter Dada to give us wisdom and says to us that Dar Upaje Dar Jai, that when the fear of God wells up in us, meaning when we start living more consciously, that it is God that's the Karta. And, but you do it in a loving way and you're conscious of that creator's creation and I have to play to the creator's game and what it means to have that fear for God that whatever comes from that as well from that God's creation that I accept it sweetly darjai but then the fears of the world start to just go away for me because Kabirji says here that Tan Dharam Meha Within that loving fear of God, living consciously that I have to play to your game, to your creation, the way you have created this game, then that fear of the world will dissolve into that. But most of us are so focused on people and the fear of people, thinking that I have to and that fear isn't a positive fear. It's that fear that, oh, if I treat you like this, if I say this to you, even though, so for example, we always use this example, say if we're at a workplace, because of status, you're, for example, you're my boss, and then there's somebody else in that workplace that is at a different position in the workplace. Somebody could be there that is to, I don't know, let's just say their, their job is to clean the office. Yeah? And then there's you own the office. Okay? And we often will come from a place of fear in the way we speak to both. And one I'm speaking to because I've got to say it right so I don't lose my job or I don't get disciplined. And we're speaking out of that fear potentially i'm just giving an example yeah and then to the other person we're like oh doesn't matter how i speak to this person they're just that they they are just whatever they are so what we're doing is we're not doing another. we're not looking at everyone with that one vision we have now divided our vision so it's not that another so it's now we've, we've divided our vision of course i understand you have to speak a certain way, you know, for certain people in what position, because of the relationship you've got with them as well. But I'm not talking about that here. I'm talking about you now, out of fear of what's going to come to you, you are now looking up to that person and looking down at that person because of their status. So there's no fear towards that direction. You don't care. So because you haven't got that, that fear for that person, you will not even think if you need if you're gonna speak down to them. Yeah. But to this person, because of the fear you've got for them, like you won't speak down to them. But it doesn't mean your relationship is pure. You're just speaking out that fear. Yeah. 
So, but with God, it isn't like that. So instead, it's getting to that place of becoming nirpo, because the Guru tells us, Ehek nahi chakri jit pao khasam na jai, that the Guru is saying that what type of service is that if that fear hasn't gone? So if I'm speaking to you only out of that negative fear, then I'm actually not serving God in that moment. How deep that is, that's like, and, but instead, if I was, if I start to see equally that I'm going to serve, I'm going to serve the light of God that's within you and within you equally, then I will approach you from a place of being fearless, but from a place of serving. You, then you approach your boss from a place of serving, and you pr approach whether it even be then that one that's clean in the office, you even approach them from a place of serving. You're not now looking down at anyone, you're not looking up at anyone, it's just this, it's beyond that, negative fear that then you become a nirpo and you're serving nirpo nirpo japa sagalpo mite and and what's amazing is when we do vichar like this even though i know you're thinking well bro you just spoke speaking to yourself and like I, like i'm not it does feel like i'm actually talking to you and um when it's relaxed like that and we're doing vichar it's um it's helping me to understand it better as well and it's helping me to dig deeper and and find examples guru sahib ji then say it's not just about going to a place of not having that negative fear then it's also about going further and being nirvar because out of that out of that negative fear it can turn into Var, it can turn into enmity, it can turn into hatred. When your relationship is based just on fear, and you're scared of that person, if I say this, they're going to, you know, kick off, this is going to happen. When we're living our life like that, there's a high chance of it turning into var, into, into, into enmity, into this sense of opposing not want to not wanting to be around that person and that's var var is opposing pushing something away that but god's nirvar is beyond that god isn't ever going to keep anything within god's heart and mind to think that well i'm going to my me being karta me being the doer, I'm not going to change the, the nature of my creation for any reason. It doesn't matter how bad you've been to me, it doesn't mean now I'm going to start opposing you. It doesn't mean now that I'm going to make this element that have, has come together in the form of food so remember, even, even the food that we eat is still from those elements. Yeah, so it's a mix of those elements in a certain food. Even though that food would normally be um, nourishing for you and it will serve you and it be good for you. But because of what you've done, because now I oppose you for being, you know, if you now have become, I've got that enmity in myself for you so i'm going to make sure now even though that food is meant to nurture you i'm going to make sure it messes you up <laughs> like, god doesn't do that because <laughs> it's the nirvar yeah, the nature of this creation is nirvar and and that's where we want to be as well like, just because of the way certain people are we don't want to find ourselves getting into that space of holding enmity for towards somebody and opposing somebody because then we're coming more and more away from that one yeah? 
तो गुरु अर्जन देव जी सेंग वब्बा वैर न करिए काहू काट कट अंतर ब्रह्म समाहू दैट इज इज नॉट टू हैव दैट वैर दैट एनिमिटी इनसाइड ऑफ योर हार्ट फॉर समवन बिकॉज इट्स नेवर गोना बी एबल टू अलाउ अस टू एक्सपीरियंस ब्लिस रिमेंबर वी स्टार्ट इन द बिगिनिंग बिकॉज दिस पाथ इज अबाउट फाइंडिंग दैट स्टिलनेस विद इन अस एंड एक्सपीरियंसिंग दैट ब्लिस बट वॉल्स यू आर अपोजिंग part of that one it doesn't mean that you don't deal with a person if they're being a certain way or if you have to protect yourself from them that's different remember if somebody is being nasty it doesn't mean you have to hold enmity in your heart towards them to be able to take steps to protect yourself from them if you're in danger from them just because if somebody is constantly being abusive to you and you might have to remove yourself from that situation that's okay you can remove yourself from a situation from internally still not opposing them and holding enmity towards them all this is about our internal response to something it's the internal response that will cause us to come away from that one from sahaj whenever we're not in sahaj in that in that bliss it means we're doing something we're doing something against we're doing something wrong we're getting something wrong we're doing something that is pushing us away from that our natural state is bliss if we're not fe- experiencing it we're doing something to push it away so then we've got to look is there something i'm opposing is there something i've got enmity towards that could be one of the reasons one of the things but to be honest like even if it's jealousy it will still come from having opposing something up someone yeah? and then it it start we we start to learn in that way we then start to take responsibility of our own response it's my response that is taking me away from bliss yeah. i could run 200 300 1000 miles away from you because that's the best thing that needs to be done in this situation but still not oppose you and have enmity for you within me internally and still want good for you that's become in nirvar बिकॉज वव्वा वैर न करिए काहू कट कट अंतर सर्ब समाहू कट कट अंतर ब्रह्म समाहू बिकॉज इफ दैट वन इज इन ईच एंड एवरी थिंग एनी थिंग द आई अपोज एनी थिंग आई एम अपोजिंग दैट वन आई कॉन्ट देन हैव ब्लिस एंड देन द गुरु गोज ऑन टू टेल एस दैट दैट प्लेस that de- that i'm describing to you that will spark that thirst within you is akal murat that one is akal kal means time because of the existence of time there's something called death and murat means image so that one is again murti is just describing what that one is that one is beyond time beyond space and beyond then death the guru tells us tu akal purakh nahi sir kala that you are akal purakh you are that being that is beyond time and there is no death above your head the guru says akal murat jis kade nahi kho that you are that one where there is you where you are never going to be destroyed only somebody that is stuck in time can be destroyed can come to an end and that often happens to us when we don't experience that one inside when we only know ourselves to be this body 
know ourselves only to be the experience through these senses and that is it and that's all that I am then for us there's death because then for us there is time and I'm thinking one day or this very next moment I could come to this body could come to an end I'm stuck in Kaal, I'm stuck then in time. But not realizing that we just went to that stillness that is inside of us. That a Kaal is accessible right now, right in this moment. When we start to use and live by practices like just reminding ourselves and then trying to experience that, that actually there is no other time other than now. The only truth is now, is this moment. And when we start to practice such things and start to come to realize that actually that time is an illusion in that sense that Everything is only in this moment. And we start getting closer then to that one. And that again is then bliss. We start to experience bliss when we start to realize that everything is now. There is only this moment that exists. Only this moment is the truth. That takes away our fears that takes away being anxious about what's going to happen tomorrow. So, Akal Murat, that one is beyond time, beyond death, that one is always in this very moment. That is the only truth. Ajuni is translated to then, the word Jun means to be born that one is beyond birth if someone is beyond birth then that one is beyond death janamang tamaranang harkang ta sogang rogang harkang ta sogang pogang ta rogang the only way there is birth there is death but if there is no birth then there's no death and then it because whatever is born will come to an end one day but that one has no beginning and has no end doesn't come into that cycle of birth and death so that again you could look into that deeper in watching our video that is dedicated to just a journey What it means to be in that cycle, stuck in that cycle. What it means not to break out of that karmic cycle, the desires that we have deep inside of us that are allowing us to continually taking birth again and again. That where we keep going through that cycle of birth and death. And then we have Sapang. Sapang can be translated to self existent, meaning that that one hasn't come from anything, hasn't been given birth to, hasn't been created by anyone else. That one didn't get the design idea of this creation from anyone. Everything comes from within. That's why the Guru said that Ham Muraka Toma Chaturasyane Usarab Kalaka Gyata. That you are all wise because of everything that you have done and created and you are doing has come from within yourself, not from anyone else externally. And the more we get in touch with that wise intelligence of that one and we start to hear that 
voice loud and clear from within. The more we become self-sufficient, we become independent. Independent in the sense of when you're in touch with that one inside, you just know which way to turn. You just have this intuition of how this creation works. You just know what's right or wrong. You know which direction to go. You know what's going to come of what. And that's what it means to be in touch with Sabang then. That then everything starts to come from within. Your direction of this life. Gur Prasad. The Guru says that this can only be achieved by the Guru's grace, by the Guru that is already one with that one. Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji says to us that Gur Kirpa Jehinnar Ko Ki Nite Eh Jugat Pachani The Guru gives us that direction of how to become nanakalin apeo gobind seo jo pani sangapani. That how you become, how you emerge with that one. And the steps towards that, the Guru tells us that, start being more conscious of jo nar dukh me, dukh nahi manne. The Guru tells us, how do you get closer to that? So when you take a step towards jo nar dukh me, in the midst of when things are difficult around you, and in the midst of pain, that dukh nahi manne, you don't get consumed by that pain. And you don't drown yourself in that pain and it becomes suffering. You remain conscious and you don't let it bring you down. You take that step and then you actually start becoming that. You start becoming that one that is in Sahaj now. Where you are not affected by pleasure. It doesn't take you into a state of arrogance and ego. And yeah, you enjoy the pleasures of this world in whatever form that might be. But it doesn't move you from inside. You remain still. This is the jugat that the Guru gives us. It's only through the Guru's grace. Like if the Guru didn't spark that within us, that didn't give us that thirst to yearn for that one, then how would we ever have started? And get, we can only get that yearning through the Guru. The Guru gives us that yearning. So in that way, then to experience that one, it's the Guru's grace. So what do we do with all of this wisdom? Guru Nanak says, Jap. Tells us, gives us this instruction here to meditate. And this form of meditation is through chanting. And that can be done through chanting out aloud, or you can even chant it internally. But to start chanting internally, you would normally need to take that first step of chanting out aloud. And then that chanting goes deeper inside of you. So, the Guru says, meditate on each word that we've just gone through in the way we've done it. Sit there with that ek unkar. Let it go deep in. Meditate on that, on these words, on sat naam. On just let that seep through and, and, and allow that yearning to get deeper of wanting to know the truth of sat of wanting to go to these places. And this way, meditate. And this, the word jap here is introducing us and giving us the name to the composition, to the bani, to jap ji sahib, that we call it as, but the actual bani is called jap. So meditate on these words. Don't just say them empty. Let them go deep inside so it gives you that yearning. And then the Guru 
says to us, which some refer to this part then being a salok, and says then to reinforce who we're meditating on, on, on which one is it, and then allowing us to go deeper, saying meditate on Ad Sach. Sach here meaning the one that has, the one that is true, meaning the one that exists. The only thing that is actually true, Guru says, go deep into remove everything. Create a distance from your body. Create a distance from everything. Go so deep inside to that one that has always existed, Ard, meaning beginning, meaning before even any creation came about, meaning always from the very beginning, has always existed. Meditate on that one, go deep inside, and just say, Ad Sach. Or anything existed, that one always existed. Before the creation existed, that one always existed. That means that this consciousness inside of me has always existed. That's what I'm connecting to. But then you introduce Jugad such. Jug means the ages, or we can say when time and space came into being. That one didn't then stop existing as the formless. That one then still existed in that moment of when the creation came. But that one still existed. You can introduce now, bring your body. When your body came about, it didn't, doesn't mean that's when you started. It means the consciousness within your body already existed. Jugad such jug means two as well. When this creation came about, in the beginning of that, that one continued to exist. Ha be such ha is even now that one is present, that formless is present, that bliss is present within us, right now, right in this moment. Nanak, Guru Nanak Dev Ji, saying, O C P Satch is always going to exist, that one is always going to exist. When we deeply meditate on that, it takes away our anxieties, it takes away our worries, it takes us to a place of stillness. That actually, the true essence, my root of what I actually am, has always been, it is, and it always will be. When this body, just like that one didn't stop existing when this body came into it being, when this body doesn't exist anymore, but what I am, my truth, is going to continue existing. And that's Nanak, or C, B, Satya. Join us on this journey of Jabji Sai podcast and Come back and listen to when we start from the first body of Socha, Sochana Hovei. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Please donate and help spread Guru Ji's message. Link is in the description below. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. Vaheguru